This is episode 51 of Outlander Cast with Mary and Blake. All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Outlander Cast. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name's Blake, and I want to call out a very special day. <laughs> Today, yes. this day we are recording this, is my wife's birthday. That it is. It's my birthday, guys. Or as they would say in Game of Thrones, it's my name day. <laughs> and all I want to do is just say thank you to my beautiful wife sitting across from me for number one, um, uh, dating me. Uh, number two, <laughs> then marrying me. I, I still don't know how the hell that happened. Uh, I think I just got her drunk. No. Uh, and then having my children, which is even crazier. That's hard. And then <laughs> and, and then deciding, hey, let's just do a podcast and create a media company together. Uh, all of these things would be impossible without her. And I love uh, you so much that I'm skipping my birthday nap because both kids are now asleep. I'm I know. skipping a birthday, possible birthday nap. No, no, which no. I never it's get. Not, you're not loving me so much. You know who you love? It's the listeners. Yeah. It's the family. Yes. That's who you love. That's that's the people. This for is whom my you... birthday gift to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, and uh, this wasn't in our notes. So, oh. uh, Mary, my darling, uh, happy birthday. Thank you. And I'm very proud, uh, not only to be your husband, uh, but to be your partner in what we do. Um, and uh, I knew. Uh, the second that I met you, I would never, ever have to be alone in anything Aww. ever, ever, ever again. <laughs> I got you, babe. And uh, you're the best. And there's Aww. nothing, there's, I, there, without you, I mean, with you, there's nothing that we can't do. And I'm just so proud of you. Oh, thank you. So hopefully all the thousands of people Aww. that hear this little little talk <laughs> will, will say the same exact thing. Like, oh. Blake's just the best. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, enough of you gushing. I know, I know. I could gush about you all day, how every old day. I am. Um, we have a couple of announcements. Just a quick thing. Remember to check out the Outlander Cast Clan Gathering Facebook group. So if you type in Outlander Cast Clan Gathering in Facebook, you'll be able to join discussions there. We pull a lot of our listener feedback, especially from the, the Facebook group. Right. Um, we got some great conversations. And also, we wanted to remind you to head on over to iTunes to leave a review. Yep. So if you leave a rating, um, but the review is when you actually also take the time to like write the words and it means just so incredibly much. And if you have reviewed us, send us an email at atlandercast at gmail.com with your mailing address, your snail mail address, so I can send you a handwritten card. I've done that for several of you and a lot of people actually internationally wow, have been yes, doing it. Wow, yes, that's right. I couldn't believe yeah, how many about people. Half of, half of the cards I wrote we're for people not from the U.S. Like so where, where, where were you going to? Like, Ireland, yeah. um, a lot to Canada, yeah. one from Australia. Yep. I'm trying to think. There, Yeah, there were like several more. So um, thank you so much to our international listeners. Some of you were like, maybe you won't write us a card because you're international. No, I still will. And <laughs> I say bring it. Uh, U.S. fans, yes. I want to see more from you because that pile, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, these piles are equal. <laughs> so especially we want to thank uh, Emily and Morley who wrote, fun discussion of Outlander cast, great listen. Mary and Blake are great. They have a great rapport with each other. I love imagining Mary's face when Blake is making his Outlandish <laughs> theories. <laughs> so uh, yes, it's it's a lot of fun and thank you for all of you who have written this review. So today- Well, well actually one more thing too. Yeah. I wanted to remind everybody about the Outlander cast book blog and Ashley's live blog that she does as the episode is on Saturday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time at outlandercast.com. Uh, Just click on the blog button and you will be able to see uh, the live uh, blog of the episode. Ashley does a fantastic job. She's absolutely killer at it and uh, it's entertaining as hell. Like I, even I, even I go to the live blog 
and, and and read it as she's doing it because it's it's just the best. And also one other thing too, if you wanted to stay up to date with Outlander Cast, all of our blogs, all of our articles, uh, all of the episodes that we do, but you don't feel like downloading it or you don't feel like going to the uh, to the blog site all the time, you can go straight to the Outlander Cast email list. And all of these things, the blogs and the episodes and even deals that we have for products that we make or whatever, it will all come straight to your precious email space. And we promise that we will not spam you. It'll only be about one per week, if that. Uh, and uh, so you, uh, we'll put the link to that in our show notes for this particular episode. But you will also see a link at outlandercast.com, a big, big square that says join the Outlander Cast email list. My love, are you ready to get to all the fanta- really, truly fantastic listener feedback that we got uh, for episode 204? Yes, I am. All right, let's do it. All right, our first piece of feedback comes from the website, outlandercast.com. It says, hi, uh, this is Nicole Hatch from South Dakota. Just wanted to say that I love your show and the banter between you two. Kudos to Mary for maintaining a straight face during the outlandish theories of the week. My comment on this last episode is about the bite marks on Jamie's thigh. It's important to remember that he hasn't been hanging around in brothels for the last four months because he wants to be in brothels. He's there to execute the plan he and Claire, and in this series mostly Claire, devised to prevent the disaster of Culloden. Hanging out in places like this with a man he despises and even worse is betraying goes against Jamie's character, but is something he does because it's necessary. If you go to brothels every day, <laughs> the ladies there are going to assume that you're there for a reason. So are the people that you are there with. So I'm not saying I can uh, condone infidelity or steps towards infidelity. But in this case, if it happens, it was not because Jamie wanted to be unfaithful, but because that's what happens in brothels. And the big picture, preventing Culloden is the most important thing. If Jamie and Claire are okay with lying, stealing, deceiving, and perhaps killing why not cheating? Mm. One other thought back to last week's episode when Claire said she was unhappy of becoming more and more conventional. I read that as a comment in her marriage. Convention among the Parisian aristoc- uh, aristocracy. Wait, how do I say that? Ar- aristocracy. <laughs> oh, damn it. Where, come on, where is it? Um, anyway. <laughs> Mary is I got it on the third try, right? You did. You did a great job. I'm Thank very you. proud of you. Thank you. At that time, <laughs> meant living a life strictly segregated by gender. The men gambled and went to brothels, and ladies had tea and affairs. I think Claire was sad that she and Jamie seemed to be falling into that convention, and she was afraid of it and becoming more than just an act. So, you know what, Nicole? Um... Wow, he has been in brothels for four months. And in the show, it looks like he only goes to the same brothel. Over and over and over (laughs) again. (laughs) So it kind of reminds me, you know, Blake owns a coffee shop. And it kind of reminds me, like, I bet people go to your coffee shop every day and they get the same coffee. The same people every single day get the same exact thing every single day. I mean, there are people that hang out at the shop. Mm -hmm. And all they do is just hang out there. Every single day, all day. It's like they don't even, don't you have jobs? <laughs> don't you got something important to do? Like, go take care of your house? You know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Anyway, at any rate, yes, he is hanging out at brothels a lot. And I'm sure that the people that are there think are thinking, yes, he's probably there for a reason. But the problem that I'm having is, is that he knows he's there for a specific reason, not to get jiggy with all the people that are there. Why are you letting a woman? I don't care what happened with Blackjack Randall. I don't care what happened with your wife. I don't care what happened. If you feel, find a purpose, you have this lust driven up in you. I don't care about any of that. You don't let a woman, first of all, put your hand, put her hand on your thigh. But most importantly, put her mouth on your inner thigh and then bite you. That That is, that's Planet Zippy right there. That's what that is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Kara wrote in, uh, she has a question, something's been bothering her, and she wants to make sure she didn't miss anything. Kara said, the show is clearly making the connection that the person who sabotaged Claire's carriage and the person who orchestrated the rape are the same person. Mm -hmm. But if Claire was specifically targeted to be attacked, 
then they know exactly who she is. So why would they be so surprised suddenly that she is La Dame Blanche and then run off? I think I must be missing something. So here's my here's my take on it, Kara. Yes, we do see the person with the mark in his hand dealing with the wheel and then also attempting to rape Claire. But it was one of his other friends who starts to freak out about La Dame Blanche and that other friend really riles everybody up. Yeah, but... But you feel like they all would know La Dame Blanche unless they're they're not in the know, right? I, well, and they could have also just said like, "Hey, you need to take care of this," and she's wearing this this coat. I I, I agree with you that that is definitely a little confusing. But I think that the guy that really made the freak out happen was a different, not hand marked person. Like he he started the. The snowball of, of fear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I but this this is this is right, for, uh, Kara. I, I really feel like something is going on here. They either we missed something or they didn't put it into the show because it just yes. If they know who who it is, if at least one of the people is that knows who it is, then why the hell would they freak out? Because even if there was one guy knew who she was, they had already knocked out Murta. What does it? It doesn't matter. I just yeah. I don't know. I I just I feel like. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like there was something that we missed here. Uh, the next email comes from Raquel. This came directly from Meryl. She says, Claire goes through the stones in November, 1743, and they were married in late 1743. Wentworth was around April, 1744. So when they arrive in France in April and May in 1744. So they haven't even been married, Claire and Jamie, for an entire year yet. There hasn't even been a full year that has transpired well, good, because I haven't seen an anniversary present, and <laughs> I would have really hoped that Jamie would have gotten her a nice anniversary present. Wow. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> wow. I'm joking. I'm just going to let that one sit there. I'm joking. I'm not going to rescue you. Hopefully hopefully you get in trouble this time and I'm not me. I'm joking. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> From Claire, uh, in an email, she, said, she writes, first off, I'm a show watcher only, and here is my outlandish theory. Master Raymond is either a time traveler himself or knows someone who is. When Claire picks up the skull of the extinct animal in his shop, he tells her he is fascinated with things that are not of this time and looks directly at her. He knows she isn't from the 1700s. And if Master Raymond is not a time traveler but is acquainted with someone who is, I'm betting it's Galus. So she sent us an outlandish theory after the Devil's Mark, which uh, we played on our podcast, but she said that Galus is alive and was not burned at the stake. And she also theorized that since she had come back in time purposefully, perhaps there were other time travelers as well trying to aid the Jacobites or at least work against them. Uh, Galus and Master Raymond would be a perfect fit, don't you think? My truly wild outlandish theory is that Master Raymond is not only a time traveler, but he actually... Oh, you know what? I had, I gotta play this. But he actually knows Claire from the future. He seems to understand and know Claire too well for such a short acquaintance. 1940s Claire obviously hasn't met him yet, but since we know Claire did indeed go back to the 1940s and apparently stays there for some time, given that Boston is nowhere near Craig Nadoon, it's quite possible that she meets up with him at some point. Who knows? Maybe 1968. We're just going to leave it there. You, you know what, Claire? I I love that theories it is so outlandish it's even outlandish for me uh, like <laughs> that is crazy i i absolutely adore this idea and for that you're gonna get this seriously i mean that that is just amazing what oh man i'm, I'm gonna fangirl all over that outlandish theory my love what do we get from anita anita wrote in and she said, I loved, loved, loved episode four. She gave it 4.75 kits. I felt a lot more like the first. It felt like a lot more like the first season, mm-hmm. she said. It was jam-packed with activity, but did not feel rushed or sporadic. Like the last two episodes kind of felt like at times. Anita's good was Master Raymond. She found it very interesting that he said that Claire was going to see Frank again. The shock and possible worry or fear on her face was telling that she was afraid that that what that might mean. 
And Master Raymond, saying that he was interested in things from other times, made me wonder if he was also a traveler and suspected mm-hmm. Claire was one. Anita's bad was Bonnie Prince Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> What a weenie, she writes. <laughs> All he does is spout the same old rhetoric about being part of God's plan yes. for the English throne. Oh. And her great, Anita's great, was the scenes where Jamie and Claire were alone, especially when he came home from the brothel, stinking and all bitten up. I loved the way they showed the tension and distance between Jamie and Claire, how it came to a head, and how they were able to overcome it and become a team again. They both admitted feelings that they would have preferred to keep to themselves, but once they got it out, they were able to move on and find each other again. Mm-hmm. It was so sad that Jamie said, I should sleep elsewhere tonight. And I wanted to cheer when Claire went to him. Sometimes it's like a band aid. You got to get, you got to get the pain out. Yep. No matter how much the truth sucks. And usually it sucks all the time. (laughs) You just, you just gotta, you just gotta get it out. Yeah. Uh, From Michael. Michael actually sent us a really cool email. He said, which plot reveal in Outlander episode 204 was based on recorded history? The answer is Prince Charles having an affair with his first Cousin Marie <laughs> Louise de la Tour of Davernay, wife of Jules, and resulting in a pregnancy. The record of the affair occurred after the rising, however, and their son died at the age of five months. Well, oh when it's your God. first cousin, and you and you know you you bump an uglies with your first cousin. I don't think that that that's that's a good thing. Oh gosh! <laughs> your well, your kid's you. probably going to be screwed up. <laughs> thank you for that fact, Michael. That's excellent. Thank you so much. On Facebook, what do we got, my love? Rosemary Knight says, as a book reader, I have to give lots of kudos to Mary for not telling Blake what <laughs> what she thinks of the theories. I don't know how do you do it. Loved this episode. Given that they only had thirteen episodes, I think the writers have done an amazing job of condensing the book and making it flow. And I also believe that La Dame Blanche and other issues I don't want to spoil will be explained better in the next episode. The explanation comes the next day in the Uh, book. Ah, okay. Yes. Do not worry, Blake. You will find out. I hope so. (laughs) Penny Armstrong says, love the podcast episode. Thank you so much, Penny. So much, and I agree uh, so much with so many things. I'm a book reader like Mary, and I had to separate my feelings sometimes as I want to take the show for the show. My hubby is a show watcher only, so I understand how hot it is for Mary to not spoil sometimes. Also, I wanted to comment on something Ron Moore commented on his podcast of episode four. He spoke at length about the fight sequence at the end. He and Tony Graffia mentioned how the entire fight was supposed to be like a three musketeers fight. He said that in reality, if Jamie and Murtaugh would really fight, they would have annihilated everyone in the room. And that wouldn't have been good for so many reasons. <laughs> yes, clearly. <laughs> so they basically made a joke out of it for the French. The last, uh, the the tassel thing bothered me too. And have a great day. Yeah, you know, I, I'm still not a fan of this fight scene, even even with the context of the Three Musketeers idea. Uh-huh. Um, I, I don't think it was funny, uh, particularly. I thought it was shot poorly. And I still don't get the whole idea of it being a Three Musketeers fight when Murtaugh was going to slice that dude's throat open. <laughs> and Jamie had to stop him. And like, I just... that, that Maybe doesn't... that's when it turned to Three Musketeers. Once he was like, nah, man. No knives, just tassels. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Botza says, in response to your request for thoughts on the bite marks, I didn't have a problem with the lack of explanation from Jamie. In fact, I felt it and his clumsy attempt to recount the events were played out quite true to his character. I got quite a chuckle out of it. As for Claire, I felt her disgust for the whole situation was captured when she says to him, Make me understand, God damn it! That line is the catalyst for their reunion, and Kat delivered it with such a heartfelt plea. Claire was able to let go of the bite mark issue when she became Jamie's confidant. He told her about the most intimate and vulnerable part of him. Claire, knowing she was entrusted with that level of intimacy after such a long period of deprivation, was the reassurance she needed to believe that Jamie's awkward explanation. After all, the absence of that connection was at the core of what BJR took from J and C. And I really like that final comment of what of what Blackjack actually took from them. Yeah. And again, remember how we've always talked about the, uh, love and time travel and all these things, they have a price. And 
blackjack rental made them pay that price a little bit you know that that kind of forbidden love and i hate that term because it's such a damn cliche but um yeah, it's true uh, it, he made him pay a price patricia kelmer on facebook said if the bonnie prince says mark me oh my god one more time <laughs> you'll hear me scream from denver and patricia he's probably gonna say it i'm, I'm just putting <laughs> you know it i was thinking there. about making when somebody says something stupid uh or something dumb <laughs> mm-hmm. from now on i was thinking about using that as the sound bite <laughs> mark me <laughs> uh, i like that uh, that's what that's, we're gonna do yes uh, she also says why in the name of heaven would louise have an affair with the bonnie prince mm-hmm. Ugh, like her hubby is hot <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to read the last comment because she said something spoilery. So I'm okay, we sorry, won't say Patricia. that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm saving you, Blake. Bob Loveless wrote in, thank you for the link to the Beyond the Stones podcast. Learn some little tidbits behind the story and some other interesting points of view on the episode. And we are so, so happy uh, that you were able to listen, Bob. And just another shout out to Kendra and her hus- husband, Jordan, the, uh, behind the Behind the Stones podcast. You can check them beyond out. Beyond the Stones. That's what I said. No, you said behind. Oh, I meant beyond. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually drinking my coffee right now it's taken me this long guys so kendra uh, as if you don't know i'm sh- i don't know how you don't know but if you don't uh she is our editor-in-chief at the Atlanta cast blog and she has decided to step her toe into the podcast pool and we are so proud of her please go check out check it out at beyond the stones podcast uh you'll be able to find the link in last episode's show notes and i'll put a- i'll also put it again in this episode's show notes as well diana uh, anderson says oh my god delilah (laughs) i used to listen to her and still do when she got her first start in boston you know it'd be amazing if delilah is an outlander fan and she actually hears this podcast and she's like (laughs) they listen Susanna thompson wrote in not sure if blake got his definition of pop and jay Uh a vain or conceited person Uh especially one who dresses or behaves extravagantly. Wow, that, that's pretty much everybody in France then. Uh, yes, Angela Hickey <laughs> wrote in that she would give this episode 4.5 kilts. Great, but a little too jam-packed with major plot points. So on the first view for a book reader, it felt crammed. Second view, let me appreciate what it did, giving me uh, knowing that it would be that way. I still say that 16 episodes instead of the 13 would have given more breathing room it needed, but kudos. My God, goes to Tony Graffia for skillfully weaving all of the pieces she was asked to get into the scene. Masterful. And I think her including a lot of dialogue stripped from the books helped to sew this together. Mm-hmm. Great was the Jamie and Claire bedroom scene masterfully portrayed. So glad it was not shortchanged even... Included one of my favorite Jamie monologues from book one about him feeling his inner self bare and exposed, hiding under a blade of grass after his fortress was blown up. Beautiful. And Jamie and Claire coming back together. Outlander fandom lets out a deep, (laughs) long breath. The bad with stars not giving us more episodes, causing some of this to come a little rushed without some needed transitions and development. Angela, I hear you. You know, I don't know who it was. It stars that said you can only have 13. Well, it's probably a decision. It's got to be a mutual decision between stars and Sony because mm-hmm. Sony is the one who really owns the yeah, show. That's why I was wondering. I wonder who it is that said you can only have 13. But I, I don't know why they would restrict themselves. It, it could also be budget to Sony may not be may not want to throw that much as much they money. They are expensive episodes. They are. They are. It's probably it's probably not as expensive as Game of Thrones, but I bet you it's up there. Oh, this is a very expensive show. Gretchen Landis wrote in, "Well, Blake, my husband also insists that one of the thugs in the rape scene was BJR. You are not alone." And for those of you Thank who you. missed that part last week, there one of the thugs he, you know, of course, they all have masks on, and Blake really thought that one of them looked like BJ Gard. On you. Twitter, what do we have on Twitter? Uh, Rhea says, I don't believe uh, that Jamie had sex with another woman in, in Dragonfly and Amber, either the book and TV. I do think, however, that the woman in the brothel tried to have their way with him while he watched. I don't know. I just, eh, I just, I, I'm. I'm still not a fan of this scene. Drowning in Chocolate. I love that name. Drowning in Chocolate. I wish I could drown in chocolate. Uh, they uh, they say, I think that Jamie should stay away from brothels from now on. And he just should have been wearing a kilt uh, to uh, have it um, to have this whole scene make sense. Because, you know, biting people through pant fabric <laughs> probably would be very serious on instagram Catherine says i love the music they played while in master raymond's shop it's magical oh. yes it is 
Oh, what else do we have, Blake? Undeniable Ayla, sure. It's uh, good, says uh, Jamie's reaction to the reel of uh, Blackjack. Totally unexpected and yet understandable. The bad was Saint Saint Germain. He is so obviously the villain here. And when he's lurking next to Claire as soon as soon as she begins to cough. Oh, my God. So on the nose. Outlander audience is not stupid, but the great was, of course, the sex scene. Loved how prominent Claire's bump is included in the sex. Although it's very dark, the lighting is beautiful. And I really like, you know, you know, some people are like into pregnant sex and all that other stuff, but it was beautiful. It really was like the bump and everything. And like, I feel like you can only appreciate that after you have a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it, it was it was really gorgeous. LD Farm Tech wrote in, I loved how Claire didn't just take Louise's request meaning for an abortion, mm-hmm. at face value. She asked questions and was able to determine that she really did want to have the baby. Mm. Together, they found an alternative. I'm glad they didn't just skip over this because it really flushes out why Claire is so good at helping the sick. She's willing to go there when others are not. And we had a lot of conversations about this topic. What did Empress write in, Blake? She said, it's not like he cheated. I mean, he had to keep a good face with his drinking butt. He did come up with the great idea of La Dame Blanche that saved both of them, his virtue and her body. So there's a little bit of a an insight. Um, us book readers know what Empress is talking about. So Jamie will be explaining to you what La Dame Blanche is. All right. All okay. Right, it's going right. to be okay. E Boogie Love wrote in that uh, E Boogie's good was the baby bump has finally been revealed and boy was it <laughs> bad that Bonnie Prince annoys me he's such a spoiled brat and great I thought the flow of this episode was right on target with the book and well done I love Fergus eating and drinking while all the fighting was taking place I love Fergus Floris let's see how I can say this Floris Donna Maria you never know how to read these Instagram names huh that's right yeah <laughs> question about episode three. Why did Claire drink at the end of the episode Whiskey to Celebrate? She is pregnant and that just bothers me so much. Was it a mistake or something that they'll miss? I'm sorry, but I need to share that. So a lot of people weighed in on this because I was also talking about talked about the drinking. Right. So Mincha Mom wrote in drinking was not considered a problem until mid nineteen seventy. My mom was advised to drink stout while nursing me. Oh well that actually makes sense. And uh Zeno Uh, Zen of Pi said, my mom told me that her female obstetrician in 1946 gave her a prescription for a six pack of beer (laughs) to help her relax and bring the milk come in and base Ball and Mo nine wrote in. As for the drinking, I don't Baseball believe Elmo. Elmo. Oh, Elmo. <laughs> Baseball Elmo nine. You never know how to read them. I know it's true. As for the drinking, I don't believe it was known in her time, maybe in the nineteen forties, that drinking while pregnant was bad. I believe the first research paper done on it was in nineteen seventy three. So drinking while pregnant would not have been on her mind. Also, wine is safer than in the water in the seventeen hundreds, which she's aware. <laughs> so lots of conversations about this. I know I talked about it in the last episode that it just makes me uncomfortable. I agree with you. Wine is probably a heck of a lot safer than the water that (laughs) might be in the area. Right. There's no Aquafina. (laughs) But it makes me very uncomfortable. And they mentioned it. uh, Diana mentioned it a lot as well on the books. And yes, she has to. They didn't know about it. Just knowing what we know now, I'm like, oh, my God, that's just so much whiskey and pour it. (laughs) The tweet of the week time. All right, let's do it. This week's Tweet of the Week comes to you by the way of the Vertigo. They say, I think Suzette is working for the Comte Saint-Germain. What? She could be the servant that bought the poison from Master Raymond. And you know what? I love this idea. And that's why you got the Tweet of the Week. That's a fantastic that's idea. That's a brilliant outlandish theory. That is an amazing outlandish theory. And that's why it is the Tweet of the Week. You know who would so, be so pissed? Who? Murta. Oh, I know. And you know... It, it would make sense because, you know, um, Claire at the beginning of the uh, at, at episode two said, you know, uh, Jared got us all these all these servants. Uh, he trusts them. Therefore, I trust them. And wouldn't it be amazing if one of them did actually? I know, I know we kidded about it a couple of episodes ago, but wouldn't it be great uh, for story for the story if one of them did backstab uh, Claire 
and Jamie. Wouldn't that be great? You know, I, I listen to a bunch of Outlander podcasts because this is what I do. And um, <laughs> no, no, it's because you're a nerd. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, I'm a nerd. <laughs> and Blake Blake really has to steer clear from other ones because he's so spoiler free. And the other podcasts, um, one of them, the Scott and the Sassanac, Lonnie Diane Rich really is nervous about the servants. And she, brings she should it up. be. It's no, but it's like one of my favorite things that she talks about because she is, she's so nervous about it. And I just, I believed Claire right away. But then I started to listen to, to their podcast and I was like, oh no, she yeah. might be right. They are always <laughs> there. So this is a great, great tweet of the week. Congratulations. Well, congratulations, my friend. You get the tweet of the week. And as always, the tweet of the week winner gets a $20 gift card from the tag your it Etsy shop. Uh, you can uh, talk to Dawn, the owner. She is fantastic. And I, I will, uh, you can put your in touch with her via Twitter. Uh, and uh, since you use the tweet of the week, and um, that'll be that. And you'll get the $20 gift card. My love, you ready to go to the voicemails? You got it. All right, let's do it. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Diana. I'm calling you from Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm a proud Massachusetts transplant. Not a girl. Listening to you is wicked cool and makes me miss home. <laughs> I'm calling a comment on episode four, La Dame Blanche. I give it 4.5 kilts. I enjoyed this episode a lot. I enjoyed how many relationships are really starting to take shape. Um, Alex and Mary and how Jamie and Claire are back to hopefully finding each other in a more intimate way. The dinner scene was fantastic. Kind of reminds you of those awkward family dinners when you were younger, and a family member has a bit too much of booze, and it takes and the booze takes over for common sense. <laughs> the family around the table is awkwardly silent, just waiting for the other shoe to drop. The acting by the Duke, the Comte, and the Prince were wonderful, and we Fergus at the end, and him not letting a good meal go to waste was awesome. Finally, before I go, I'm a show watcher first and foremost. And a late book reader. I'm almost done with Drums of Autumn. So like Mary, I kind of know what's going to happen a bit. But frankly, since my children have sat my brain cells, I sometimes can't remember who killed who or how (laughs) something was originally done. So I'm not overly critical. So I feel like I'm watching it with new eyes, just like Blake. Um, Quick question for Blake. Um, I know you wrote that amazing blog about how we shouldn't worry about season three. But I have to admit, not knowing is driving me a bit nuts. Mm -hmm. So I um, hope um, you guys are having a great evening. Thank you. P.S. The kids are really cute. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. And I'm glad that we got a good Massachusetts girl calling in. That's fantastic. First of all, um, it, it's not when you were young when these family dinners were awkward. They're still awkward. I'm 33 years old. Oh, my God. Yes. And it is still quiet. And there's still too much booze that's consumed. And it's still extremely, extremely awkward for me sometimes. Um uh, as it relates to the season three, l- listen, uh, I'm not going to go through a whole diatribe because I think a lot of people did not like my last diatribe about TV <laughs> and how it works and so on. Uh, so I will I will not go through the, all the details, but I will say, uh, don't worry. Uh, in my opinion, the, the season three will be renewed and we should be getting an announcement uh, by the end of this month of May. Well, I'll tell you this. I was listening to the uh, podcast with Ron Moore. Once yep. again, I listen to all the podcasts like all the time. Nerd. So <laughs> Ron Moore's <laughs> Outlander podcast. And he and Tony were talking about how funny it was that this episode was recorded, I think they said like last winter. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and now what are we doing? We're hanging out in the writer's room writing season three. Yeah. You see, so, I, I've heard about this and I want to caution anybody that uses this as evidence that season three is happening. They're writing. I mean, they have the right to write. They have to write. And and it's and they're, it. they're writing because they have to either one pitch or two start using getting the framework for the pitch or three. Season three has already been approved. They've already got the word from Sony and stars. Uh, and that's that. And, and it would make sense that they started working on it before there was an announcement. Um, so, I mean, there is evidence that you could use, but be, caution yourselves uh, just a little bit. But I do think it's going to happen. We'll get an it. We'll, we should be getting an announcement historically for TV that happens, you know, the next month after the show premieres or this, this the third month. So either this month or June, we should be getting one. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Karen from Servant Math. I watched episode 204 last night on my iPad. My initial good, bad, and great is, great was the love scene between Claire and Jamie when she came to his bed. Good was when Claire and Master Raymond um, had their conversation inside the back of his apothecary shop. Bad was Simon Cowell's 
acting in the dining room. <laughs> My initial count rating is 3.8 because of the choppiness and the inconsistencies of the episode. I would really like to hear the reactions of book readers versus non-book readers to episode 204. I'm going to rewatch the episode again on my TV when I get home to see if my opinion changes. Well, thank you so much for calling in. Thanks. And an- Oh, you're welcome. Have a great day. Thanks, Bye. we will. <laughs> wow, that, that threw me for a loop. Uh, <laughs> I was like a ninja. Just snuck that in there. <laughs> That's my girl, Massachusetts girl playing on me. Hey, and you know what? We're getting all these Massachusetts people. This is fantastic. It made me feel like I'm at home. I'm, I'm no longer I know just where stuck other in Rhode people Island. Are in the country. Well, I'll tell you what. We got a, we got a, a, a someone calling from Virginia. That's a Massachusetts transplant. We got last week. We had someone from uh, Martha's Vineyard, and then we got Sherborne. Sherborne's like that's like a legit place. It's it's almost as legit as Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> We're getting all these high class people calling us. This is fantastic. Anyway, um, yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that about the iPad because sometimes your viewing experience is totally different on the iPad than it is yeah. in the TV. I agree. My love, yeah, you would agree with that? I think so. I think it is. However, our favorite time watching on the iPad was the season finale. <laughs> when our daughter was born. Yeah. In, in, in the hospital room. <laughs> when. <laughs> Whatever. I had nothing else to do. I just had a baby. I know. I agree. We were celeb- it was celebrating. <laughs> Sitting in a bed on an ice pack. <laughs> so let's get to the next one. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Andrea from New York, New York. It's my first time calling in. Um, I would say I'd give this episode about four kilts. I'm really happy that now we're getting back to character development. All the other episodes have been very plot-driven. Mm-hmm. Uh, my good... I would say is the fact that Jamie and Claire are now acknowledging the pregnancy. The bad, um, well, I didn't really like the scene when they were heading back to the, uh, to the apartment to get ready for the dinner party and, you know, the attack and everything. I thought that, you know, they lingered on that a little longer and maybe, uh, they should have shown less and had Claire tell Jamie and about it instead, instead of just showing everything. Um, and the great, well, the dinner party, I thought that was a lot of fun, um, especially the fight scene at the end. The music from Bear McCreary was excellent. I really love the part with uh, Fergus sitting down and eating the food and everything. Hmm. So um, it's great uh, being able to call in and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Bye, guys. I am so glad that we had someone call in saying that they liked the fight scene because it's been such a resounding, I didn't like that, right. from, from different people. So I'm glad that you really enjoyed it. And I love hearing, this is the purpose of the listener feedback episode, to hear other opinions so it's not just the two of us, but it can be tons and tons of more people. I agree with you. Bear McCreary just makes me so happy. Karen, two things. First of all, I'm sorry that I ripped on your state last <laughs> last episode. I just, I don't like New York, but that that is what it is. But number My two. My best friend's in New York, so. I- Hold on. I know. I agree. I know. That's the reason why we go to New York. Otherwise, I wouldn't be going. <laughs> but uh, she brought up a great idea, Karen, you did, um, about the scene when they're coming back to the to the apartment. Would it have been better if they didn't show the rape scene? Would it have been better if Claire, like they show the guys attack Murtaugh and then they cut away to Jamie and then Claire has to come home and, and tell Jamie what happened? Um, and say, yeah, and you know, but they, it was funny because they stopped and when they when they mentioned this word La Dame Blanche, what the hell is that about? And then Jamie would have had this like little look on him, like, uh, what do I do? And then then they have to get going. Would that? Would do you think that would have been better? Or do you think they played it out the way that it should have been? <sighs> I don't know. I, I you know, it's so hard because there's only an hour. So I am not a writer mm-hmm. by any means. <laughs> I just, I just trust. I'm a truster, and I said this is the best that they could give us, and right. they made these choices for a certain reason. So it's hard to say. I think once we see next week's episode and see how they handle up the follow up, then we can have a little bit more clear reflection. Okay, all right, that make, that's fair. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Kathy from New Jersey, and it's, I had a, a lot to type, so I figured I'd call um, and leave my good, my bad, and my great. Um, so many good things this episode, so many to list, but I'm going to um, ultimately go with the the intense stares between Claire and the uh, 
the Comte Saint Germain mm. and how Claire got in that last that last dig at the dinner party. Um, the bad there's not much bad this episode. Tony Graffia gets great high marks from me for including a lot of things in the book and trying to make it all work. Um, but there wasn't enough time, I guess, to explain the La Dame Blanche um, and why Claire uh, didn't get attacked as Mary did. So I guess that would be the bad, and they'll have to explain that, I guess, soon. And the great has to go to the Duke of Sandrium. Um, every week I feel like there is a character that shines, and for me this week it was the Duke of S., who had all the great lines and just his smugness and his um, the look of it on his face is just great. So overall, I give this this episode a 4.75. Thanks, guys. Love listening to your podcast. Bye. You know, I really like the idea of how she said that there's always uh, a character that shines in every episode, yes. and and I think I think I I agree with this. I mean, do you do you agree with that too? Yeah, I if. I agree. Yeah, I think everyone needs a moment to shine, so I'm glad that they get to. Right. Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Karen from Pennsylvania. I had a few thoughts on episode 204, La Dame Blanche. I thought it was a great episode. Um, I'd give it about 4.7 kilts. I think everything came together so well in this episode. It was like seeing a puzzle fall into place with all these little details. Um, there were quite a few bits of foreshadowing. We had the title La Dame Blanche implying this mystical quality, somewhat um, being maybe a little bit grim and foreboding. Um, and then we had all these little details like the hand on the carriage wheel, the dice in Master Raymond, um, and that bit about Frank. Um, Louise and Claire discussing her baby that it will be brought up by a, a man that's not the father. Um, either the monkey bites, even Mary discussing Alex Randall and her being in love and then Myrtle and Fergus had been discussing earlier that she's in love. We find out all these little things are coming together. Um, so it was really well done and really enjoyable to watch, I thought. Um, one thing I'm looking forward to in the next couple episodes is Myrtle finding out about Claire and her uh, being from the future. I'm looking forward to finding out how that happens. I have some ideas about that, but I'm not sure if it's a spoiler or not, so I'll keep it to myself. But um Really looking forward to the next couple episodes. I think we're going to see it just kind of pull together even more. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for calling in. I think that's the that's it for the voicemails. My love, are you ready to close out the show? You bet. All right, let's uh, let's close it out. <laughs> guys saturday is almost here so excited and <laughs> what are you looking for, uh, most forward to just that i want merton to know the truth and i want la dame blanche to be explained i just want these little things to be filled in and explained and as i said i think it's going to give a lot of insight back to this past episode how mm. about you uh i need more from the comte the Saint Germain. I need more okay. from him. I need more. I need more lines. I need more reasoning. Right now, he's just a mustache twirler to me. <laughs> a very pretty one. He's very. He's he's <laughs> he's smoking hot. Listen, I'm comfortable in my manhood enough to say that he's smoking hot. Good for him. Um, well, I wish I wish I looked like that. So, if you're going to be watching the show live, I know a lot of people watch it as soon as it's available. But if you want to watch the show live, you're going to want to head on over to the Outlander Cast blog. Because Ashley is once again going to be live blogging the show. And it also becomes an amazing recap. So head on over to the Outlander Cast blog to check that out. And we're going to want to know all of your feedback after this week's episode. Right. So reach out to us online, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Head on over to our website. Email us, outlandercast at gmail.com. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What? Outlandercast at gmail. <laughs> or write it even in the Outlander Cast gla- Gathering Facebook uh, group that we were talking about. Or you can go to the website, outlandercast.com. Check out the little button that says support, where you can help keep this podcast a free podcast. Uh, but you can donate a dollar or two on Patreon. Or just tell a friend that we exist. That That's actually a huge deal. That That's, that's probably the most important thing that you can do. Uh, for us is just tell somebody that we exist. I know that I spoke on the last episode about the iTunes reviews and I want to send out more cards. So if you write us mm-hmm. a review, don't forget I'm going to send you a snail mail. You just need to email us 
your snail mail address and I send it to you. The other thing that you can do actually, which super helps and I've never mentioned this before, is if you head on into iTunes and you click on Outlander Cast and you see the ratings and reviews, if you click if this review was helpful and you say yes, so if you find some five stars reviews like Emily or Malay just wrote that really great one that I read in the last episode and it says, was this review helpful? Click yes. All of these little yeses make iTunes realize that this uh, podcast is useful to people. Yes. And by doing that, you're helping more people learn about not just our podcast, but more people will learn about Outlander. Right. So if you have already taken the time to write a review, thank you so much. And if you could go in and say that some of these reviews are helpful, it will help us out of as course, well. Of course, if we deserve it and you think we're a good enough companion <laughs> Uh, for you to Outlander, yes. your favorite television show. Uh, so if, if we are a good enough companion, please write a review or say that it was, the reviews that have already been written are useful. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And happy birthday to my beautiful Thank wife. You. I started the episode saying happy birthday. I'm going to end the episode saying happy birthday Thank that you. you are the most important woman being on this planet in my life. You're the prettiest girl I ever met, even though you dropped something and you interrupt my beautiful, my beautiful monologue. That's okay. You're the prettiest girl I ever met. And I only, and the, the, the moment I met you, I knew that was it. That was it. And that's cheesy. It's totally true. It was like the sun came out. It really was. And uh, that, that's intentional. That's so. your bottom dollar. <laughs> so that's my girl. Happy birthday to my Thank beautiful you. wife. And happy Mother's Day to all of you. Until next time, ladies and gents, I'm Mary Larson. My name's Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast. <laughs>